الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم My uh, respected scholar and um, mentor Professor Dr. Yusuf Al Qaradawi, um, my respected colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the Center for inviting me uh, to participate in this conference and to share some of my um, humble views on this very important subject of. Uh, the methodology for the study of ethics. And I agree uh, with um, Brother Jasser that um, this is a very important topic that uh, scholars, Muslim scholars will have to address. Um, I would like to begin with um, my slides, um, which is... Uh, on the appropriate methodology for the study of, uh, of ethics. And uh, here I say that um, the uh, Islamic ethics being uh, synonymous with Islamic faith, Iman and the uh, divine way of life and the quest for the Islamic uh, appropriate methodology assumes Muslim scholars' dissatisfaction with the way or ways Islamic ethics as an integrated system of comprehensive moral behavior has been studied or taught. And uh, evidences of serious ethical crises in contemporary societies are too numerous to, uh, to enumerate. And um, we have raised this question concerning the effectiveness of the Ummah's moral education as well as societal reformation. We have also raised questions about the relevancy to new contemporary and new contemporary issues. And we have also raised the issue of interrelationships with other branches of religious and worldly sciences. And we have also uh, discussed the importance of engaging with the non-Muslim culture and, and public. And we have taken note of the variety of approaches uh, from, from our past um, experience with classical scholarship, in tafsir, in fiqh, kalam, falsafa, tasawuf, and also uh, the branch of uh, nasihatul muluk. And in the 20th century, we um, were more concerned about a comprehensive and independent discipline, and this was uh, spearheaded by Dr. Abdullah Daraz with his groundbreaking uh, PhD thesis uh, which was later uh, translated into Arabic, Dustur al-Akhlaq of Fil Qur'an. And um, his classification is still very, very useful, and many people are actually basing their works on his classifications. The individual ethics, or Akhlaq Fardiyya, uh, family, Akhlaq uh, Usriya, social ijtima'iyya, uh, dawliyya, and also what he calls religious ethics, or diniyya. And we have um, some of the scholars, we can mention some of them here. Uh, Muhammad Yusuf Musa has come up with this falsafat al-akhlaq fil islam wasilatuha bil falsafa al-ghariqiyya tawfiq al-tawil uh, Ma'abad Farghali, Hamdi Abdul Al, 
uh, Abdul Sattar Nassar, and also uh, Abdullah Muhammad Al Amr, Al uh, Akhlaq Bain Al Madrasatain, Al Salafiyya, Wal Falsafiyya. And uh, with the advent of this Maqasid um, al uh, Sharia approach, championed by several prominent scholars, um, preceded by the work of rationalistic or theoretical systematization uh, and identification of the khasais al-amma uh, lil-islam uh, by Sayyid Qutb and later on al-khasais al-amma lil-islam by Dr. Yusuf al-Qaradawi and his works fi uh, fiqh awlawiyyat and also al-siyasa shari'a fi dhaw nusus al-shari'a wa maqasidiha um, and of course his works and other people's works on different dimensions of ijtihad. Uh, the study of Islamic ethics has secured a, a solid and original basis for further development. And the debates on what constitutes the new or subsidiary maqasid to the original five or six, if you include Ayrt, uh, identified by Al-Ghazali and before him Al-Juwaini, uh, Ashatibi and others would continue to pose new intellectual challenges in addressing uh, the branches of Islamic ethics. Uh, we'd like to mention also the work of uh, Majid uh, Khaduri, Ethical Theories in Islam, which looks very closely at the four different trends uh, or approaches or methodologies the scriptural morality, theological ethics, philosophical ethics, and religious ethics. And we also take note of uh, the very important uh, contribution of Al Mawardi in his Kitab uh, Al Adab, Adab al Dunya, Adab al Deen wa Dunya, and uh, also the others. Um, one book that um, is rarely referred to by scholars of, uh, of, fiqh, of, of ethics is by this uh, Japanese scholar Izutsu, which I think spearheaded the uh, semantic analysis approach uh, to the Quran based on what he called the, uh, the, uh, the Quranic Veltanshang. So he has the worldview, the tasawwur, of Islam as, a, as, a, as the uh, uh, framework, and then he goes into the semantic analysis of all the important terms uh, in the Quran, and came up with, I think, a wonderful uh, thesis which is not frequently referred to. Of course, his theory of um, semantics is, is not new. He took it from this German uh, scholar, Leo, uh, Vice Gerber. And then we have. Um, okay, it's on. Abdul Rahman, Taha Abdul Rahman, from what I have uh, read uh, a little bit, uh, comes up with something quite new also on the, uh, the idea that, that the uh, ethics should be based on the notion of of obedience of, uh, of the real master of, of nature. And on the issue of global ethics, because there is this movement of global ethics championed by Hans Kung and others in the Parliament of Religions, uh, he has also given his own views. Uh, another very important work in English, which um, I think could complement the other works, is by Abdul Rahman, uh, Dr. Uh, Fazlur Rahman Al Ansari, uh, with his two volumes, um, The Quranic Foundation and Structure of Muslim Ethics. The second volume is completely devoted to ethics, but he calls it um, the, um, the universe or, or the empire of duties. And I think um, this empire of duties work can complement and balance uh, the, uh, the concern with rights or hukuk 
حقوق الإنسان حقوق العباد and with this responsibility of duties I think uh, a more comprehensive and holistic uh, treatment or study of um, Islamic ethics could be achieved. Um, we would recommend the following. Uh, number one, to uh, harmoniously integrate all the positive elements from the above approaches, keeping in mind the purpose of human existence, the will of God, and the current conditions of the world, and to balance the principle of rights with the principle of duties, and to incorporate uh, new ethical issues and the theoretical and practical so solutions based on the harmonious integration of reason and divine revelation, and to include contemporary case studies. I think one of the things we can learn from Western uh, disciplines, especially in business, uh, management, and ethics, is the study of, of uh, case studies uh, based on actual um, operations on the ground. And I think uh, this can also enrich our understanding of uh, not just the theoretical aspect of akhlaq, but the applied aspects, especially the failure of Muslim uh, morality. Uh, perhaps we need to come up with, with case studies of successful and also failed institutions. Um, then there is, uh, I would like to come up with this uh, idea of looking at um, a very important uh, institution or rather problem in Muslim life, the problem of corruption. And I would suggest that, um, that perhaps we can begin a bottom-up approach rather than a top-down perspective. All the time we are looking at a top-down perspective from the ideal to the reality. Perhaps we can also reverse a trend by looking at the reality to the ideal. And the reality is most uh, mind-boggling. So I'd like to share with you some of this appendix from the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. Uh, Now, this is the ranking of um, this is the ranking uh, for for the year two zero one two, and we can see that um, the only country that has come out is uh, at the top thirty is Qatar in the uh, uh, in two zero one two. Uh, the rest, of course, are non-Muslim countries. Uh, and you can see the rest, the full list. But I have also put um, the Muslim countries according to uh, the ranking here. You can see, of course, Alhamdulillah, Qatar is, is at the top, followed by UAE, Mauritius, Brunei, Bahrain, Malaysia, Turkey, Jordan, Oman, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Bosnia, Tunisia, uh, Morocco, Djibouti, all the way down to uh, Kazakhstan. And uh, uh, of course also Yemen, all the way down to Somalia. Now, this is the least corrupt top 20 countries from the year 2000. I've collected the data and rearranged according to uh, in 2000. Um, of course, none of the Muslim countries make it uh, in the top uh, 20. And um, also 2001, no Muslim country make it in the top 20. And uh, 2002, also no Muslim country. 2003, no Muslim country. 2004, no Muslim country. 2005, 
six, seven, eight, nine, only in 2010. Okay, so I have five more minutes, thank you. Only in 2010, uh, we have a Qatar there. Uh, but then it disappeared in 2011. And 2012 also disappeared. Among the most corrupt top 20 countries, uh, of course, you can see that in green are the Muslim countries. So we occupy the uh, bottom 20 most of the time. From 2000, 2002, 2003, 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Um, so I think if we can uh, focus our studies on the causes of corruptions, and what are the institutional, structural, uh, as well as cultural obstacles which uh, prevent the um, uh, Muslim morality from, um, from the position of most corrupt to the position of least corrupt, that I think will help in the, um, in the further development of um, Islamic ethics. And finally, on the second question, I would, um, I would um, uh, provide the following response. Um, number one, uh, correct and profound uh, what, with regard to fatwa and the um, uh, compatibility with, with uh, ethical values, I would propose that we need to, now, number one, have a correct uh, profound understanding of the problem race. For instance, in Indonesia, there was an ESQ program, um, emotional spiritual coaching uh, program for the motivation of many professionals. And thousands would attend, and many people were transformed by the program. Uh, but um, there was a fatwa saying that because some uh, aspects of of yoga was involved, it was declared haram by a mufti in Malaysia. But the muftis in, uh, in Indonesia did not declare it haram because the, uh, the uh, element of yoga was the, not the philosophical uh, or the spiritual or the metaphysical, but only the physical aspect of yoga. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.